Hello friends, welcome to the third week of the Satipatthana course. This week's topic is the feeling foundation of mindfulness, the second foundation of mindfulness. We covered the body foundation last week, the sphere of the body and the five senses. And now we start moving into a slightly more subtler aspect. So the way these foundations are built up is that each one is slightly more subtle than the next and which is why we start with the body and now we move towards feeling foundation. The Pali word that is used for feeling is Vedana. So the English translation of feeling is can be a little bit confusing because it's not about feelings, it's not about emotions like sadness, anger, grief, um, passion it's it's much more a more a building block of experience vedana is the the feeling that accompanies every experience so with an experience of um of me pinching my hand there will be a neutral feeling and at some point if i start to twist this that feeling will start to turn from neutral to unpleasant, to um, painful even, when it's more strong, or maybe just uncomfortable. And it is really this um, feeling, the kind of evaluation or the, the feeling of whether something is pleasant or unpleasant or neutral that accompanies every experience. So we might also have thoughts, thoughts that come, thoughts that are pleasant to think. May all beings be happy. May you be well. May I be happy. May I forgive myself. These are pleasant thoughts. They come with some kind of pleasant feeling. And we also, of course, have unpleasant thoughts. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should be. I feel so bad about this unpleasant feeling that accompanies. So the, the feelings foundation can really come from both the body and the mind and it can be either pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. So I'm going to read now from the Sutta. This section is very short and it includes the refrain again. After the conclusion of the body foundation. And how, monks, does he, in regard to feelings, abide contemplating feeling? Here, when feeling a pleasant feeling, he knows I feel a pleasant feeling. When feeling an unpleasant feeling, he knows I feel an unpleasant feeling. When feeling a neutral feeling, he knows I feel a neutral feeling. When feeling a worldly pleasant feeling, he knows I feel a worldly pleasant feeling. When feeling an unworldly pleasant feeling, he knows I feel an unworldly pleasant feeling. When feeling a worldly unpleasant feeling, he knows I feel a worldly unpleasant feeling. When feeling an unworldly unpleasant feeling, he knows I feel an unworldly unpleasant feeling. When feeling a worldly neut neutral feeling, he knows I feel a worldly, worldly neutral feeling. When feeling an unworldly neutral feeling he knows I feel an unworldly neutral feeling in this way in regard to feeling he abides contemplating feeling internally externally internally and externally he abides contemplating the nature of arising the nature of passing away the nature of both arising and passing away in feelings Mindfulness that there is feeling is established in him to the extent necessary for bare knowledge and continuous mindfulness. And he ab abides independent, not clinging to anything in the world. And we basically have these three um, po polarities of feeling. We have these three different feeling tones, if you will. The tonality of what is the felt experience of something. So we have the pleasant tonality 
a pleasant sound, a pleasant sight, a pleasant smell, a pleasant sensation, a pleasant thought. We have the unpleasant feeling tone, so that's an unpleasant thought, an unpleasant sensation, an unpleasant sound, very, very loud sound, unpleasant sight, disgusting sight. Um, and then we of course have the neutral feelings, the things that don't really rouse us too much. It's also called the neither pleasant nor unpleasant feelings. So it's neither too strongly unpleasant or too strongly pleasant. And these feelings are neutral, which can be of course sights, sounds, smells, thoughts, sensations. And the key here is that we are just knowing it. So this is quite important because we are very used to in our lives to not just know the feeling. We are used to following. When something is pleasant, the mind tends to react with liking, with trying to create more of it. When something is unpleasant, the mind tends to react with disliking, with trying to get rid of it quickly, with aversion, with resistance. Um, and even when things are neutral, we usually don't know that there is neutral feeling present. So this is the, the key ingredient of there is mindfulness. There is awareness of the type of feeling that ex is accompanying every experience. Because this feeling, foundation is really the, the doorway to further discomfort or further resistance or further clinging that starts to happen. So whenever something comes into contact with one of the sense doors, the five senses and the sixth sense door, which is the mind, um, usually the mind reacts to the feeling that, that accompanies it. If it's a pleasant feeling, more of it. Unpleasant feeling, get rid of it. Or even later on, the mind remembers this, this thing that caused the pleasant feeling and wants to have more of it. It did not understand clearly that... Um, the pleasant feeling is something that arose and passed away. Then the, the second part of it is distinguishing between the worldly and the unworldly pleasant, unpleasant and neutral feelings. So it has this, when feeling a worldly pleasant feeling, I feel a worldly, unworldly, pleasant, unworldly, pleasant. And so on. So what does it, what does it mean with worldly and unworldly? So worldly means um, pleasant or unpleasant feelings or neutral feelings that are caused by the material things, that are caused by uh, things that are of the householder's life, which is all of us basically, of the, of the normal life, of the engagement with society, of the engagement with relationship, with, with different things. So we have these um, eight eight winds they're called and uh, the two sides of the the same coin so pain and pleasure so pain is one side of the coin pleasure is the other side of the coin pain we don't like pleasure we like another coin fame and disgrace being seen as as, as um, being being known being well known uh, in, a, in a positive way and being disgraced being known and being in disgrace to many. So the image that we carry of ourselves in other people's minds. Then there's of course praise and blame. Being praised feels good, being blamed doesn't feel good. Um, and the, the gain and loss. So gain, material gain, gain um, can be also f other objects, gaining objects, gaining a certain type of clothing or personality or job that you like and these are the the eight winds and usually we don't see clearly this these sensations this feeling that accompanies when someone says something positive to you hey you did such a great job immediately there's a pleasant feeling somewhere in the body this is then the nervous rack the nervous system there's like a if I, if I would venture into neuroscience, which I'm not, not very well versed at, 
there's a kind of release of dopamine that happens. Or when we use our phone, there's a release of dopamine. And we attribute that dopamine release to the phone. But really it's a feeling that arises in our body. And we tend to react to this feeling in the body rather than the, and not the actual thing. And it's the same thing with unpleasant feelings. Pain in the body is created through the nervous system, through the reward circuit in our brain. Um, so here we have the, the worldly category, the worldly feelings, those that are caused by the material, the normal householder things. And then the other category is being able to distinguish what is an unworldly feeling. So unworldly, the way it's probably meant is um, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feelings that are gained from spirituality, so from practicing. So as our mindfulness deepens, as our concentra concentration deepens, there is a more, more peace arising, more calm arising, more tranquility arising, or joy also arising. So this is what we would call an unworldly pleasant feeling. This is something that is not directly related to um, material things or being praised or blamed. It's kind of a little bit more independent of these kind of conditions. And it's something you're gaining from, from practice. So even gra gratitude practice or forgiveness practice is creating pleasant feelings. But they're not directly related to someone saying something good to you or you getting someone that something that you want. or But it's related to the, the practice. So the, the pleasure from concentration also. And... Yes, worldly, unpleasant, un unworldly, unpleasant feelings. So uh, with spirituality and, and as wisdom arises, of course, we start to also know better. And sometimes there's some kind of guilt or b blaming ourselves or discomfort that starts to happen on the journey because we, we know better, we saw a better way, and yet we, we act in unwholesome ways. So unworldly pleasant feelings unworldly unpleasant feelings get created with that so the key here is just to know the feelings as they happen as they arise to know what causes the feelings so to know the feeling that accompanies a particular experience throughout the day someone says something good or something unexpected happens expected happens something you want happens pleasant feeling arises um, and this is really a doorway to understanding how we react to experience and how we react to this unpleasant pleasant feeling rather than the actual experience in the next video i will break it down a little bit more um, with the with a, f a different model that will make it a bit clearer In regards to the refrain, so it's the same refrain as before, just replaced with feelings instead of bodies. Um, here we are contemplating feelings that are caused internally and externally. So sometimes those feelings are caused by something inside us, some memories, some thoughts. Sometimes they are caused externally, a sound, a sight, a smell, a, a person, external person that creates this unpleasant feeling or pleasant feeling or neutral feeling and we abide contemplating the nature of arising of passing away and of both arising and passing away in feelings so this is really key because we start to see the impermanence of feelings usually when something unpleasant happens we always attribute permanence to the situation something bad happens and I think it's so bad and then there's unpleasant feelings and because I misperceive these unpleasant feelings as me, as mine, I, attrib I usually think they are permanent. I think they are very strong and long-lasting, but they are actually very something very transient. And as we start to observe pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings, neutral feelings, throughout the day and throughout the meditation, we see that the whole thing is just very rapidly changing all the time. Even something very bad is happening in the life. 
there's not always the whole time unpleasant feelings there might be some moments of neutrality moments even of pleasant so it starts to break up our black and white perception of situations things being super bad or super good and we start to look more closely and we see that actually these feelings are arising and passing away very quickly so in every moment there's feelings arising some pleasant unpleasant neutral they are arising and passing away very quickly and mindfulness that there is feeling is established so we start to separate feeling from body so we start to see that feeling is not necessarily always the same as body so there's sensation and then there's the feeling tone which accompanies that sensation which isn't always the same and bare knowledge and continuous mindfulness we just know it just barely knowing just staying at contact staying with present moment this is the feeling that's happening and continuously more and more trying to have continuity of this awareness of what's going on in experience before we have little moments of awareness in big gaps where we are thinking and now we try to make this gaps less by celebrating every time we realize moments of my like taking snapshots what's happening what's happening and he abides independent not clinging to anything in the world so in our form of practice we are not giving any importance any priority to working with conditions working with thoughts or our working with content of me and the world you are just observing the experience not clinging to anything this is the way to practice and advance and go deeper into the understanding 